Okay, so welcome. I am going to go through what's new in Visual Studio 2017 tonight. Um, I'll start with uh, a little bit of a trip down memory lane. Um, in 2002, who used this in 2002? Okay, maybe a third of the audience. Okay, if you think about the highlight in that version, well, I think most people were pretty excited about the web forms. 2003, well, that was, uh, that, well, I'd call that a consolidation release because we had plenty of problems with uh, .NET 1.0. It was very fresh. Um, the best thing that we got was 1.1, I'd say. But we also got this little company come, come out, and who would have thought they'd be long stayers? And that was ReSharper, and most of us couldn't do without ReSharper. 2005, well, what do you think the best thing in 2005 was? Mm, there's local web servers. I might say TFS 2005, but if you remember back to then, you probably wouldn't say it then, because it used to take about three days to install. Um, I think the most important thing was generics, because we still use it today. 2008, well, we got lots of cool things coming out. We got MVC1, which we didn't at the time think was as cool as we started thinking over time. We got JavaScript IntelliSense. That became more important as we did more IntelliSense. Load testing. There was um, these iPhone and Androids came out back then. Not that we could do much with them. I think the biggest thing was Link. And we still use that today. It was like uh, seven years before the Java guys got it. 2010, what was the best thing? Well, Microsoft came to the um, party with their Windows phone, and you usually say better late than never, don't you? Except in this case. Um, we got Test Manager. That was the first time testers and developers were talking to each other on the one system. So that was good. We got MVC. That became great. I'm going to actually tell you the best feature in there was IntelliTrace. And I'll tell you why I think that. Um, because I think almost all the customers that I had that bought uh, what we now call Enterprise, but we used to call Ultimate back then, uh, they bought it for that feature. The idea of never having a bug that was not reproducible was delicious. Okay? Um, some customers still do it. It's not mainstream still, but I think it was uh, a massive marketing success for sure, and a you know, good piece of technology, just not well adopted. 2012, well, we got lots of cool stuff. Um, we got a lot of black and white back then. That really annoyed people. If you remember on the top of user voice, that was the number one thing by you know, an order of magnitude. Um, we got IntelliTrace in production for the first time, MVC 3 and 4. I love this exploratory testing. I think uh, we couldn't do without NuGet. I'm going to say the best feature in there for me was storyboarding. And that, the reason for that is because it was the first time we had a tool that we could talk to business users with. And it was in the box when you know, there was um, Balsamic and others. But here it was nice and easy. This was very easy to whip up in a client specification and press F5. Um, so I liked it a lot. Anyway. 2013, we got, well, I love code lens. You know, it's a beautiful little thing. I rarely see people turn it off. We got some, um, well, I don't know why they released team rooms. Uh, that didn't go anywhere. So we have Microsoft Teams now, which is better or even better, go with Slack. We got Git support. That was a TypeScript. That was huge, TypeScript. But I'm going to say the number one thing was visualstudio.com. And at the time, the Visual Studio TFS team did not want to do this. They were mandated to do this by the bosses, the big bosses. Uh, they had a lot of requests from all the MVPs and all the users. And one of the, the top of the list was not give us a cloud-based version of TFS. But Microsoft were investing heaps in Azure. And it's kind of interesting. We would put this at the top now. We would say, like, I don't want to manage my own TFS server. In fact, I just did a session at TechEd with Daniel Malik on, on this. And we upload that version to um, SSW TV as well about how to move it to the cloud. And that's, what, that's the end of uh, TFS in the office. So the other thing we noticed was Microsoft started changing the way they were de delivering stuff. They were delivering stuff to us every two years. It was like this massive kind of trying to boil the ocean approach. 
they started giving us these updates, which were not service packs. And, and they had some little fixes. And as we got going, they started giving us more and more stuff in here. Um, we, we would get um, a whole lot of Git improvements. We'd get um, new versions of J, you know, JSON editors. We'd get all these nice charts in the portal. We'd get tagging, you know, work items without tags. OK, um, that's how we had to live before. And this load testing, I think, was uh, awesome because we got load testing and app insights. They're huge products, and we got them in an update. Um, we also got uh, Cordova tooling. So Cordova, of course, we, at that point in time, we could have gone out and bought Xamarin, but it was very expensive. Um, and so Microsoft gave us Cordova, and Cordova allowed us to target or build hybrid apps against all three. And something you might find interesting, if you have a look at, um, has anyone looked at Power Apps? Who's looked at Power Apps? Just one. So we've built a couple of little internal solutions on it, our expense, if you want to per, uh, do it at an expense request, you do it on our little Power Apps thing. Um, it will probably get more and more popular over time. It is a mobile, you build it in a little, like a powered Power BI designer, and you just deploy it. It's a cloud-based mobile app thing. Um, that was built on uh, Cordova, okay? So, you know, you can tell when you do a bit of coding, it's case sensitive and stuff. All right, anyway, so I'd say Cordova is the big one. Update four, we got, you know, lots of cool things. And I think the biggest thing would be release management. That's a web-based version of a deployment tool. Um, we heavily use, well, many of the guys here heavily use Octopus. Other guys go straight for release management. And it depends which client they're working with. Some clients have a massive problem with buying third-party stuff. If it's in the box, and even though they're a big, rich company, you can't get them to buy stuff outside uh, the Microsoft ecosystem very easily. And so we go with that. It works, and it's fine. But there's other people. Uh, Adam Stevenson says, um, you know, you couldn't pry Octopus from his cold, dead hands, you know? So he's a complete Octopus dude. Um, Visual Studio 2015, what did we get? We got uh, our, our menus became title case. Um, uh, what else? Perf tips. Yeah, so I'd say the biggest thing that most people would say would be Roslyn. Roslyn was um, a different compiling engine and a lot of this was built purely for, um, to support Xamarin. Okay, so it's a pretty important release. All right. Um, I, w I w should also call out this, which I was calling ASP.NET 5, and I probably still do sometimes. Uh, it's ASP.NET Core 1. And uh, we, went, we went live on this in beta, uh, and that was an important product, and I'll talk more about that in a second. Um, and 2015 Update 1. What have we got some cool stuff in that as well. Um, I would say go to implementation was probably the most important bit. And that was only important if you didn't own ReSharper. How many people here have ReSharper? OK, so 78% of the room. Um, with, uh, with that, um, so that allowed you, especially more and more people using dependency injection and uh, you know, F12 doesn't cut it. And so that was a pretty important feature they added in to get us by. Um, but obviously, you'd still use ReSharper, wouldn't you? So uh, update two. Whoa, what do we get here? Uh, we got Hockey App for you know, mobile apps. Uh, Team Explorer got a lot better. I think that the best thing was probably this auto update extensions. We have our, it's hard to believe, it took until update two of 2015 before our extensions would automatically tell us that they're out of date. All right, and uh, update three, what have we got here? Uh, well, oh, the one I was asking for for years before, I think I was asking for it with the MVPs for about five years, and uh, they were making a joke of me in the end. But this one, the marketplace. We need that marketplace early, um, but we got it. Um, and there's another one I'm just going to call out, this add reference using NuGet. If you, um, say, come in here and go new GitHub client, it looks up its internal cache, and a light, bulb, a light bulb pops and says, hello, uh, do you want to be using uh, OctoKit? And you click, yep. 
find and install the latest version from the web, and it says, I'm going to add this line of code into the using statement and grab that one. Do you want to take it? So I, I don't like Visual Studio doing anything that you don't know what it's doing. And you know, this is kind of nice. All right, uh, a little about me. I am uh, a Microsoft Regional Director, an ASP Insider. I am mostly known for crashing a Tesla. Crashed the first Tesla in Australia. Although, that was, um, if you look closely, that was April 1st. And uh, that was purely just to do a test on my wife. I didn't realize that that would um, get some such notoriety. She, my wife apparently never looks at Facebook. She's, that's like her war cry. She never, she doesn't have time for Facebook. She's too busy. Well, I posted this up and within minutes, she called me on the mobile and said, are you an idiot? Take that off Facebook. You don't have insurance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, uh, that was a good trick. All right. And I have two beautiful girls. And um, I, this is what I looked like when Visual Studio first came out. <laughs> Gee, I was young. That was, that was my little Eve. So um, hopefully... Uh, how many people have already installed uh, Visual Studio 2017? Ooh, hardly anyone. Okay, just a few. So I guess my goal is for you to um, realize that this, this version is worth installing by the end of tonight. We have many guys, in fact, uh, there's a, most of the guys here who are working on serious projects in production, they've been using it for two months, okay? and without a hassle. So I think it's ready, to, you know, it's already stable and ready, but if you can't wait, you know, you can wait another couple of weeks and it'll be an RTM. All right, okay.